Hi, everybody, and welcome to our next episode of the Santa Cruz Symphony's digital series, Symphony at Home. I am thrilled to welcome our principal cellist, Jonah Kim, an internationally acclaimed soloist, chamber musician, all around amazing musician, really one of the world's greatest cellists. It is my great honor to do so here in beautiful Golden Gate Park. It's a misty morning here. San Francisco is where Jonah and I both live. It's where I'm originally from, and it's part of this gorgeous Bay Area that we all love. So without further ado, I want to welcome Jonah Kim. <laughs> Thank you, Danny, and hi, everybody. Great to be here with you today. My name is Jonah Kim. I play cello, and I'm happy to talk to you today about some of the music Danny and I have made over the years and some of the things that we're looking forward to. When I think about your playing, I really think of you're an artist of such consequence. So many artists spend the time to get a certain level of virtuosity, but then to have that and then really proceed into great interpreted, that's with total commitment to your idea, your belief, which you do in every note, every opportunity, every moment that you're conveying. It really, you know, that's a very special level of artistry and it's a profound pleasure to get to collaborate with you here in these contexts. And that's, you know, what also came through in your things this summer, you know, uh, your Chaconne, where and you collaborated with your fiance and uh, made something so, so special with that. Thank you. It was especially um, meaningful to me. I thought that was incredible. There's a YouTube video of me doing it when I was like 16. And back in those days, I had a very different idea of Bach. And yes, I, I had been, I had just studied the, the work with Mr. Aldwell, who helped me transcribe it. But even then, my understanding was different. I hadn't lived with it as long. And to be able to do that again now with Julia and with these things going on in life that make, make us think of music and art differently, I feel fortunate to make music with people like you who let me play like because you know what I mean like of course, of course it's a mutual thing my friend and so so that you live here and then we get to do this like we're, we're the lucky ones right truly truly so thank truly, you truly. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely played the Dvorak concerto together in Santa Cruz was yeah. one of the great highlights of the last seven years for me and I know for everybody who was lucky enough to be in the audience and enjoying it live was something that they constantly rave about and was tremendously impactful and I'm really excited to get to share with all the folks at home your experience with the piece leading up to the mm -hmm. Santa Cruz time, and of course, love to and hear and the good time that we had, the good time that we had together. <laughs> well, Dvorak, you know, is one of the the big war horses. Like, if you're a cellist, you have to play the Dvorak concerto. And I guess I first learned the concerto at Juilliard. I was eight years old, so. By now, I've played it a few times, and and like I said, it's it's a big, uh, familiar work, a standard for for every cellist. But for me, I think it, ha it holds a special personal meaning. My my cellistic lineage is is not just Curtis and Juilliard. It's not just the uh, Orlando Cole, Leonard Rose, Felix Salmon Italian school. The other side of my cellistic upbringing it, lineage is the the Starker side, the Hungarian side. But Starker's teacher, David Popper, we think of as Hungarian, yet he was born in the Czech Republic. So he really is the father of the Bohemian Hungarian school of cello. And so I consider him my cellistic grandfather. And I think that style of playing was the style of playing that Tony had in his head when he wrote the concerto. Culturally and musically, I feel very close to Dvorak and, to, and having grown up with the piece and having studied it with all these different schools of cello playing and having lived in Prague. Gosh, the beer there, the culture there, that bridge. Something happens. There's bridge. a romance about the, the Bohemian life that's different from like the, the glory and majesty of the Vatican or, or Rome. It's just very different, you know? And that kind of like almost quaint everydayness of the, of the Bohemian life, I think is the, is the magic and the romance that, that Dvorak captures. And maybe even is more relatable to the American way of life 
because Santa Cruz for me kind of embodies that spirit too, you know? It doesn't Definitely even seem like an American town. And you know, our friends on Sunset, their places look like something out of Italy with the pizza oven in the front. Like it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> so to play for friends who live like that and people who value that kind of romance about life and to play this kind of music, for me, that was, that was special. Playing chamber music or making music with you or, or friends who get me in my musical tastes and, and priorities, um, just yeah. by being around somebody, like I become better. Just by being around Julia, I become a better person. Like when I met her, I told her, I like myself when I'm with you, you know? So making music with you is the same thing. It's like, oh, and you said, oh yeah, you committed to that, but you are the one making me commit myself to that in that way. One of my favorite things in the concerto and something you played so unbelievably soulfully, thoughtfully, intimately, with great heart and nuance, is that uh, song that he quotes in the second movement when he's thinking about his sister-in-law who is dying, which was her favorite, and that's why he quoted that. Right. Leave me alone in my thoughts and my dreams and my reverie and my nostalgia, you know, for, for Isn't whatever it, heartbreaking? it is. It's heartbreaking. So instead of ending triumphantly in this general crescendo through that rondo finale, it comes to this point of slowing down and, and more meditative, prayerful, reverential solace, this meditation, and it's again that melody that ends it, and it's goosebumps for everybody in the audience. The expression of the thing and the meaning of the thing changes, at least for me. Yes. Because undeniably it's heartbreaking. But heartbreak feels different for a child than it does for a teenager, than it does for a 20 year old, than it does for an old man or an old woman. The very first recording of this that I heard was Casals. And I remember hearing it and thinking, oh, that sounds like passion. That sounds like pain. And I remember feeling that pain and thinking that I understood it. And I shared that feeling with Casals and with the Vorschach. But then as I got older, I learned it myself, played it myself in that way that I believe so strongly. This music is about the pain and it's about the passion. I don't think so anymore, you know? And it's so, it's so interesting how that changes. And I think that's, that's the most important thing is we think of rights and wrongs, but the rights are not static. The right for that is not right for this. Like the right answers are the ones that somehow are flexible or somehow- Honest in the moment. Evolving and adapting. But now my perspective on that melody is not passion, it's not the pain so, it's, it's not the uh, kind of pain so much. I think this is only after a few heartbreaks, you come, you become familiar with this kind of thing, you know? I'm playing the Sansons Concerto with the Philadelphia Orchestra, right? And it starts with one chord from the orchestra, bam! And then I'm supposed to come in. So I'm bowing, 
Zavalish is bowing, as far as I can tell. But as I'm coming back up from the bow, I hear BAM! <laughs> so I started playing. So I played the first brace and standing up. And then, <laughs> and then you get another BAM! And so I sat down as quickly as I could and played the rest of the piece. Now, if I was nervous at all beforehand for my Philadelphia Orchestra debut, it was gone. That'll do it. <laughs> at the best time. <laughs> and years later, I found the photo and I, put, I posted it on Facebook. And David Kim, the costume master, he costume comments, master. I remember that day and we started chatting and we laughed and laughed and laughed. But live performances, you never know what's going to happen, right? This atmosphere and the marine layer and the coastal fog is so evocative of the same atmosphere as in Santa Cruz. So even though we can't be there, that leads me to my next question, which is Santa Cruz and your experience in that, uh, this really magical town. I have lived, I guess on, what is it, four continents? California, I'll tell you, is the most beautiful place I have ever seen on this planet. And I, I love California for the variety of, of beauties that were surrounded, like, like the mountains, the, the, the Pacific Ocean, the, the weather, the grapes, the people, the friends that I have here. I mean, the wildlife here, it's unlike anywhere else. It feels like really the best of every place I've lived before. So when I go to a town like Santa Cruz, it's, it's special because the people get it. I feel like everybody there gets it and I feel like I'm just playing for all my friends. Um, I've, I've been going to Santa Cruz actually for almost, I guess it's the last 10 years. I've been going to, for chamber music and for a variety of concerts. And then of course, when I guess you moved back because you were at the Met and then the last few years is a real change in the, in the quality both the art being made, but also in, in the quality of the art being appreciated. It's being appreciated better. To do that for a community like Santa Cruz, that's really special, I think, because these people enjoy the art without being pretentious about it. At the same time, they're also so successful at what they do. They're so supportive of all of the different ways in which we want to, to make music and to change music. Because I always say, um, it's, it seems like we're doing an old, outdated art form, playing classical music. But I don't believe in classical music. I don't believe in rap music. I believe in music. Amen, bro. Just like I don't believe, like we don't believe in colors anymore here, right? We just see people. It's the same thing. Why should I, because I play classical music, not use the expressions that everybody understands because it came from maybe a jazz influence? Why limit ourselves to something that we already know? 
because really the fun part is to share the things that we don't know yet. I'm not, I'm not really about these little boxes like classical music and I love that Santa Cruz isn't either. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's a special place. Yeah. Like Ellington said, if it sounds good, it is good. <laughs> yep, exactly. You're at the beholder. This all ties into the family at the symphony itself, right? Because, I mean, the Santa Cruz community, it really is like, like a family, but at the symphony, it's even more close-knit, I feel. And every time I go there, gosh, I mean, there's, there's like all kinds of goodies and snacks all around, and like everybody is asking about everybody else's kids, and it's just a, it's just a good time, you know? And it doesn't feel like... I shouldn't say this, but it doesn't feel like work. Because let's be honest, like we hang out with them before and after rehearsal, right? So like the volunteers and the host families, it's really like a community thing. And that's how art should be. Talk about setting trends. This is the place. This is, and this is the time. The art itself has to evolve. And so now, I mean, it's more difficult than ever to raise funds for arts, but this is the time because, I mean, let's face it, we all know your investments are doing fine and we all know there like is no life without art. So right now, the art that we had been making, we can't make the same way anymore. It's a no brainer. When you give now, you're not just giving, you are becoming the art. I say this over and over again, but right now is the time to give to the arts because it's changing. It's not like the way it was the last hundred years. We're not gonna do the same thing anymore. It's a party and it's the art that we all want. Try dancing without music, right? It doesn't work. Try doing anything without music. It doesn't work. And so it's very meaningful work, I think. I mean, and anybody with kids, we know, right? You wanna put them to sleep? What do you need to do? You gotta sing them a song. You have to sing them a song. Music is what the closest thing to real life magic. We send vibrations through the air and for a short time, we can influence somebody's thoughts and feelings. What is more meaningful than that? I can't really think of anything that's just that real and that immediate and no one can ignore that shared experience. The Santa Cruz Symphony doesn't play in a concert hall. Boring. We play in a stadium. We play in a real arena. And we make magic. And we make magic. Every space has an energy. That's exactly it. The concert hall makes you feel a little stuffy. We don't do that in Santa Cruz. <laughs> we go to the real stadium, to the real arena, get the real people together, and we, not pretentious, we just enjoy the art and we're not trying to pretend like anything. Yes, we want to, we want to go out and we want to see our friends. We can just have a good time down the earth and enjoy the music. And this is what Santa Cruz and California, this is what we're about. I like saying that, you know, you won't find a higher caliber result in a more casual setting anywhere. And that contrast is so sensory enhancing. It's so special, it's so unique. That incredible, you know, humble community atmosphere that is just so intimate and so sincere. immediate and so special sincere. and it's very sincere mm -hmm. and you know to have such an influential region like you said silicon valley the bay area but this bohemian beach town that's now a college town that has surfing that has redwoods in the mountain you've just it's incredibly rich uh, diverse community and atmosphere already and then when you have an orchestra that has such humble community roots and yet we've injected uh, a lot as we've built with absolutely world-class A++ international talent. You have another incredible dichotomy and this wonderful synergy mm -hmm. that comes out of it is again really unique and so I, I love that you are sharing this dream of building something. It's my life mission so Danny, you know that, you know, because I'm all about shifting the focus from the thing to the person. That's how I feel about it. And I think people in California feel similarly. And I feel like I feel like when we make music together, it's really about the sharing and the people. So yeah. 
that's why I live here. That's why I love making music with you guys. And I just feel very grateful and blessed.